Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part 31 of Steambot Chronicles. I'm running into a horse because I've returned to Skylark Farms to visit the boy who I helped deliver a letter to the other farm over at Vision Ranch. Hey, mister. How is Eric doing? He gave you some cheese. Oh, cool. I love Eric's homemade cheese. I should give him something in return. Um, hmm. I know. Could you take this paper dragonfly to him? Please give it to Eric, mister. I gotta, if I want the best ending in the game, I gotta. So, uh, yeah, again, this is very, very important, very central to getting the best outcome you can possibly get. But, uh, I took this trip to Skylark because it was, you know, on the way. But really, I'm in New Haven because I want to give the sailing license to Captain Sibylette, and I'm not a member of the Bloody Mantis in this dimension. I'm a good, upstanding, not fascist. <laughs> But along the way, I decided to stop by Don Puccini, and look, one of the kids from the orphanage is here because he has taken him in to become a prospective gladiator champion. So, uh, yeah. Oh yes, take this with you! And I got a film reel too for my trouble. It'll help me with the Neverberg Theater side quest. And I got one more film reel in the Bloody Mantis hideout. So yeah, we are going to resolve that side quest. It just takes a while to get the film reels. It just takes a while, but we're finally doing it. We're finally doing it. Anywho, we got that sailing license. Let's hand it off. You found the sailing license. Thank you. We are in your debt. All that's left is saving up enough money to rebuild our ship. Uh, excuse me. Oh, vanilla! This must be the broken down old shack you told me about. How dare you bust in like this! My apologies. I'm Sir John, and I heard my son Mallow was here. Oh, I see. He's in there. He, he is? Dad! Family reunion, huh? Thank you, Captain. Mallow explained everything. I'd like to talk about what we're going to do now. You too, Vanilla. While searching for Mallow, I heard there's an organization out to kill him. Captain Sibylette, your shipwreck was no accident, I'm afraid. It can't be! Sorry, Captain. It's all my fault. No, it's not. You aren't the one who sunk the ship. He's right, Mallow. Don't blame yourself. No, Sibylette. I think it was a lesson my son had to learn. At any rate, they're still looking for him. It won't be safe here much longer. I don't want there to be any trouble, so I'm going to move Mallow somewhere safe. As you wish, but where? I own a school in Eurydica. It's closed down, so I'm sure nobody would ever think to look there. Which is where you come in, Vanilla. I'd like you to take Mallow to Eurydica. I know you're strong enough to handle it. You enter the UTC. Sure, I'll take him there. Thank you. Oh, and equip this on your trotmobile. Attach this emergency bed and let me know when you're ready. Now that we have the sailing license, we can go back to sea. Thank you. Oh, right, take this. A mini engine! Hello! I obtained this on one of our recent voyages. Using foreign technology, we were able to make it more compact. I'd like you to have it now. Well, that's interesting because that means that I officially have all the parts I need in order to help Fennel with his musical dream, eh? Because I got the mini generator, the mini engine, as well as the guitar. So instead of just getting the emergency bed, strapping it to the Tropmobile, and taking Mallow to a Eurydica, this is a good opportunity to wrap up some side quests. And by the way, folks, this is going to be the last week I do side quests. I'm going to wrap them all up in this particular session. So, uh, yeah, if you're bored of side quests and you just want the main plot to keep going, don't worry, we're going to be getting to the main plot in this week, as well as ending all the side quests this week. So, yeah, George, the owner of the Happy Garland Motor Shop, he wanted us to get a mini engine, a mini generator, and a guitar so he could create an electric guitar. And we got all three parts. Booyah! We now have an electric guitar. Hell yeah. Fennel now has his unique sound. <laughs> 
So we get that and we go back to the Riverside Hotel, or was it the Station Hotel? Station Hotel, I believe. And Fennel and his bandmates are still just hanging out in the dining hall. If only there was a way. Oh, I got away, Fennel. Th this! Vanilla! It's a guitar powered by electricity! You did it! Come on, guys! Get into position! Alright, so I usually like all the music in this game that's done by Nadia Gifford. This, however, is a track not performed by Nadia Gifford. And uh, your mileage may vary whether this is actually a good piece of music or not. <laughs> I'm kind of on the fence of whether it's a good piece of music, but still, this is a new track. And uh, I'm going to perform it with my electric guitar. So, uh, enjoy or cover your ears because uh, this is an acquired taste. <laughs> How was that, ladies and gentlemen? How was Music Revolution, huh? Huh? Was it amazing? Was it everything you hoped it would be? <laughs> and we got a poster of Fennel for our trouble, so now we can hang up Fennel in our room, in our apartment, so yeah. And we got the Blue Bolt plate, which is really what I'm after, because I just want to get all the plates, and uh... And that's it, that's it for this particular side quest. You can re-perform the song anytime you want, uh, Nadia Gifford does not do her version of Music Revolution. Connie will not adopt the song for the Garland Globetrotters, so this is the only time, the only place that you can perform Music Revolution, and, uh, it, it, it's certainly a song. <laughs> I genuinely wonder where they got that vocalist, if he was, like, someone who just worked on the game, and they're just like, well, we need a singer for the fennel part, uh, uh oh god. Because it has to be in English, right? Is it in Japanese in the Japanese version? I don't know. I know Nadia Gifford's tracks are untouched in the Japanese version. They're they're in English even in that version, but still. Either way, I've gone to the train station and I'm talking to the conductors here. I have to do this, I have to do that. Should I ask about the article of chicory? Hmm, okay. You want to know about the accident in front of the station? You mean the accident involving Dandelion's little brother, right? No one really wants to talk about that. We all feel somewhat guilty about it. To be frank, I don't want to talk about it either. I had just started working at the station, so it was quite a shock to me. Was I shocked by the accident? Well, yes, but I was more shocked at how people reacted to it. I'm embarrassed to say it, but that includes me as well. I can't say anything else. If you want to know more, ask the priest. Okay, so people were 
nonchalant about Shikari's death. If only there was a skilled tropmobile rider. You! You're the guy from the UTC! Vanilla, the earnest city slicker. You couldn't have come at a better time. Some bandits have taken over the Quail Tunnel. Oh, I could have come at a much better time. I've been hearing about this the whole friggin' game. <laughs> I've been hearing this ever since I left friggin' Neferberg. Dude, this is not the best time, but whatever. So finally, after you compete in the UTC, a mandatory story scripted event, you can finally go to the conductor here and help resolve the Quail Tunnel Bandit Incident, which will help clear out the tunnels and allow us transport from Happy Garland to Nefraburg so that we don't have to keep constantly cutting through the Sabia Desert every time we want to go to the southern areas of the country. Holy moly, this area, this, this side quest should have unlocked long before this point, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But yeah, we ride a train into the tunnel, and now we got ourselves a boss fight. So I'm not really sure who these bandits are affiliated with. They're not with the Bloody Mantis, because if you actually join the Bloody Mantis, they do have a mission of you know, freeing up the Quail Tunnel so that they can transport around too. So, they're not associated with the Bloody Mantis, they're not associated with the Killer Elephants, they're just one of those ragtag bandits that just have big giant mecha monstrosities. Because, you know, Steambot wanted you to have boss fights, except, you know, they can't always be... have an allegiance to something, you know, they're always just random things. Who made that submarine thing in Lake Luminoso? I don't know. Who made that driller that was in the mines? I don't know. But, uh, we got a lot of bosses to take out, and this one has three phases. With this one, the machine keeps popping in and out of the coal, and you gotta keep whacking it, but, at the same time, the drills are constantly poking into the coal, so if you're underneath the drill when it goes down, uh, it'll do a lot of damage. And I'm using the long-range cannon, which is supposed to be very powerful, and it homes in on enemies, uh, but it's not helping me as much as I would have liked it to in this fight, so, uh, you know. It's very good in Trotmobile battles, it's very good in a one-on-one -on -one fight, because it definitely tracks them, but hey. Try shooting it here, but it keeps running into all these cogs, all these wheels that keep getting sent my way, and I'm just like, ah, damn it. I want to hit this thing, I want to hit this thing! Stop getting in the way, wheels! Stop it! <laughs> and then I run out of ammo, so I'm just like, alright, I'll get up close and personal and just whack this thing. Screw up the camera. Now uh, this fight isn't actually all that scary, because even if you take way too much damage, you can actually return to the cart you rode in on to get an instantaneous health refill. This is like one of the only times in the game where you can refill your health, like, right away. So, uh, even if you're taking too much damage, even if you are a little bit badly hurt, just return to the cart you came in on, uh, activate it, and boom, your health goes back to normal. So, uh, it's not that challenging. It's not that bad to deal with. But hey! The Quail Tunnel is clear, we can now go back to Neferberg by train whenever we want, no more cutting through the desert, no more long treks, we can just instantaneously warp to wherever we want in this country. Thank god. Took way too long, but finally we can do it. Man. <laughs> Thank you! Now we can resume service to and from Neferberg! Please, take this! A quail tunnel plate. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's if, you know, I keep just using the Eggman plate that uh, James Donaldson III made for me, but uh, I guess I could be wearing all these plates that I keep picking up, huh? Thanks to you, the Pencil Railroad is back in business. You saved my job. Thanks, kid. Oh, and by the way, a good tip. Invest in stocks with the railroad before you handle the side quest, because after you resolve the quail tunnel incidents, the, the stocks will go up. And then you could sell them for massive profit. That's something you can do with the stock market system uh, if you've been paying attention to how the businesses are operating and stuff. Again, you can manipulate the stock market by helping out with side quests, by delivering certain supplies to certain, you know, businesses. Uh, there's lots of ways you can manipulate it and really profit. Hmm, you're... Uh, Eureka! This is incredible! The solution to the problem I've been working on for the better part of 34 years as a professor! <laughs> a kid I know solved it. Is that true? A boy solved this problem? Could you give this to the boy? 
An approval to enter Garland University, hell yeah! So I gotta return to the orphanage later to give that to the boy, because he solved this problem that this guy's taken 34 years trying to solve. So, you know. He's a smart kid, that kid. Imagine if it was that easy getting into university. <laughs> anyway, I've returned to the Urban Times, because now that I've resolved a quail tunnel incident, I can report on it and make that a headline story and give me a scoop. You helped to reopen the quail tunnel? This is quite a scoop! I'll make a, it'll make a great front page story. Won't it? Won't it? <laughs> I overheard. Wow, I never imagined you'd get such a scoop. Here's your reward. Ten bucks, which is nothing in the grand scheme of things, but eventually this place will rise in value and then I can sell stocks and they'll give me even more money and it'll be very very awesome but one of the conductors said i should talk to the priest to learn more about chicory so i'm gonna do that right now you know about the accident that happened several years ago very well my son i will tell you of the sin this people of the city committed it happened when a young man was waiting for his friend at the plaza in front of happy garland station his friend's train was late so he continued to wait for her it was then that the son of a wealthy councilman saw the young man the wealthy son always picked on the young man and his older brother because they were poor. This time was no exception. He took the young man's bag and began to taunt him with it. He threw the bag into the street, and when the young man went to retrieve it, he failed to heed an oncoming car. Unfortunately, that wasn't the end of the tragedy. Those who witnessed the accident didn't try to help the young man. They ignored him as he lay dying. Why didn't anyone help him? Because the culprit was the son of a very rich and powerful man. You see, my son, back then, people thought that the wealthy were the only ones who kept the economy running. The first person to lift up the young man on that rainy day was... Dandelion, who had heard the news about the accident and ran all the way to the station. The friend arrived late to see. Dandelion drenched with the rain, holding chicory, and screaming at the top of his lungs. Would that friend have been... Who was there, who has so much trauma and guilt about what happened? Of course we know the answer to that. It's Connie. Connie was definitely there. That's right. It was Connie of the Garland Globetrotters. She and Chicory were supposed to meet in front of the station to buy Dandelion's birthday gift. At any rate, it isn't something the people of this city will soon forget. Such a grave sin. Sounds very traumatic. Again, Mallow was kind of an asshole back then because he was a rich snob and he looked down on the poor Welcome. and he got Chicory killed, which is not good, not good. But speaking of Connie, I decided to visit her because she's no longer traveling with us after the UTC. She goes back to the Lobster Inn and I give her the pink dress. Why? Well, you will see in the next part. You will see in part 32 because we're going to be performing another song in the next part. And that means that I have a, a village to rebuild. So, in order to prepare for that side quest, I'm also picking up some steel beams from the factory section of Happy Garland. I picked up four steel beams because I will need them to rebuild Mem Village. I will need it to help supply the railroad with construction parts so that they can have transportation over there. Yes, yes, yes. I'm planning ahead. I'm planning ahead. So come back, ladies and gentlemen, for part 32 because we're going to see a new Nadia Giffords song as we join Mem Village into society. Till then.